Praise God. He's good. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome to our online congregation. I have a feeling it's a little larger today than maybe normal. We're uh, got a little more snow than we expected today. Amen. A little spring snow. Hallelujah. You got your Bible? Open it up to. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4, or it'll be on the screen here in just a second. Hebrews chapter 4, we're in this ser- little short series. Yeah, kids are dismissed to go, I'm sorry, kids are dismissed to go. Praise God for our Howard and Judy doing kids ministry and uh, showing up when it's snowing and showing up uh, rain or shine, amen? amen. Hallelujah. kind of in this mini-series that I've just called Power for Living and looking at some practices or what some might call the disciplines of the faith that God has designed, that actually he's designed certain things to literally generate spiritual power in our lives. So he's designed practices that we participate in that actually generates, just like a generator would generate electricity when the power goes out, all of a sudden the generator kicks on and that generator just begins to produce electrical power and it begins to feed that to the places that, are, that it need that. In the same way, God's got practices that he has specifically and strategically designed so that when we participate in them, they begin, they begin to bring power to the places in our lives that need it. They generate, literally generate spiritual power, spiritual energy. And that's what God wants to do. That doesn't mean that we don't face problems in our lives. It means that when we do face problems, that we are able to walk through them, get past them, and eventually have victory totally over them. Amen? And kind of when you first look at spiritual practices or spiritual disciplines, you, you, it, it kind of just looks like uh, what I would call spiritual stuff, right? Stuff that churchy people do or, or religious people do. You know, you'd hear somebody maybe that's not uh, a person of faith say something like that, that this is churchy stuff, this is stuff that, that people do, you know, that's what, that's what you do and, and all those things. But these things are designed to have this amazing practical application so that when we walk out and live out our faith and live out our life for Christ, that as we practice these things, they're not just spiritual stuff. Yes, they broaden our spiritual horizons. Yes, they deepen our spiritual walk and they do all those things, but they also have this amazing practical application for people's lives. And the practical application then begins to invade this very lost and very broken world. And we need that kind of power. It helps us to be able to walk in ways that keep us from those paths that are devastating to our lives, like we see so many people walk around us. I mean, this world is filled with people who are just, they're, they're not creating spiritual energy from the Lord in their lives that's helping and healing them. They're, they're, they're creating destructive things in their lives that are, that's pulling them down and destroying them. And we see it every day as we walk among people and, are, and live among people. You've got coworkers and family and friends that are, that are on paths that are just, you, you can tell where it's going. And God says, I've got some ways to help you stay strong, stay victorious, stay walking in power, spiritual power. I want that in your life. So we've looked at a couple of those practices that we've, we've talked about how praise helps empower us to live victoriously. We've talked about how prayer empowers us to live victoriously. And this morning, I just want to talk for a few minutes about how, how feeding on Scripture, how feeding on the Word of God, how feeding on this helps us walk and live in power. And, you know, again, like I've said with all these, these are not things that we've never heard. These are things that are, that are common to the Christian walk. But we can oftentimes get off track in our spiritual disciplines and begin to find ourselves not walking in the kind of power that God wants us to have. And almost every time, that's because we have veered off 
practicing what God wants us to practice. We've moved away from the pipeline that fills us with his power. Amen? And as believers in Christ, so we're going to talk about the Bible today. As believers in Christ, you know, we, we, we pretty much know what to say about the Bible. We, we pretty much have our, our, you know, our phrases and our things down pat. You know, this is, this is the... This is the only rule for faith and practice. This is the inspired. This is the inerrant word of God. We, we have all these phrases and, and we've developed all these doctrinal statements and we've got all kinds of ways of answering the questions of doubters and seekers and all those things. But it, even though we can say all those things, oftentimes in our practice, it doesn't show up. I mean... If I, if I could go around any, any church and just talk, not just this church, any church, and just start talking to people and say, okay, do you believe this is God's word? And they would say, absolutely. And I would say, do you read it every day? Um, that would be the next phrase out of their mouth. Um, because guilt, conviction, you know, all, all that stuff begins to, to ooze out then. And because... If this is God's love letter to us, and he wants us to be immersed in it, and if he is going to literally use it like a generator to generate spiritual power in our life, then he certainly would want us in it. Amen? And so, but I don't want to, I'm not going to tell you these things today because I want you to feel guilty. I'm going to tell you some things today because I want you to be motivated to, to get back into the word if you've been apart from the word or, or, or to just re be refreshed in the fact that God is speaking to you if you're in the word all the time. Because that's what he wants. He wants us to walk in his power. He wants us to be able to walk successfully and victoriously in his power. Amen? Amen. We can't just defend it, though. We have to depend on it. Amen? Because if we just defend it, which is what lots of Christians can even give a really great defense that this is God's word, but just defending it without depending on it, it's just kind of a hollow statement all by itself, isn't it? I, need to, I want to depend on this book. I want to depend on what God has to say. I want to depend on it because I know that when I depend on it, God begins to pour into me things that can come to me no other way. Just like with praise, there's no, there's no substitute for praise. There's no way that we can get some of the things we get from God without just praising him. There, there's, there's some things we just can't get without prayer. We just can't get them. There's just no other way. That's the way that he designed for that part of the spiritual life to be generated within us. And there's, there's just certain things that I can't understand apart from this book. I can't get it any other way. I need, I need to get in here for myself. Amen? So let's just talk about feeding on the word of God. Let's just read this verse. We'll pray and then we'll talk about it for a few minutes. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, pretty well-known verse. We love this verse. For the word of God is living and active. It's up there, right? Let's read it out loud together. Come on, right out loud. You ready? For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Father, thank you for your word, Lord, today. Thank you for praise and worship. Lord, what a privilege to come and worship you and praise you and glorify you, Lord, and give you all the glory that's due your name, Father. I just glorify you and I thank you for who you are. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, Father, that you will minister, Lord, to our hearts today, God, that you will motivate us, Lord God, that, Father, you will draw us into that place, Lord, where we love, love to feed on your word, Lord Jesus. Lord, whether we're watching by internet today or we're here physically, Lord God, I pray that you would speak deeply into our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So what, how does feeding on the word of God, when I say feeding on the word of God, so I'm going to make the distinction here between feeding and reading, okay? Feeding is not just reading. Are you with me? Feeding is not just reading. Feeding includes meditating, thinking, 
how is this going to apply to my life? Let, letting, it, letting it roll over in our spirit. Spending time with it. Eating. Digesting. Amen? Just like when I, when I eat, I'm expecting that I'm going to be able to, from that eating, I'm going to be able to ingest those things that are necessary to live on, nutrients, vitamins, all that stuff, right? That's what I want when I get to the Bible. Anybody can read, but not everybody is ready or willing to feed. Amen? So we want to we wanna feed on God's word. We want to feed on it. So feeding on God's word, how does it, how does it empower us? How does it, how does it generate spiritual power in our lives? Well, the first way it does it is it, it empowers us to see who we really are. It empowers us to see who we really are because we don't often see who we really are. We would like to be somebody else. That's why, that's why the advertising industry is a multi, 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 multi billion dollar industry because they are trying to get you to look like, be like, think like, act like somebody else. They show you what they are trying to promote is the ideal. And then they tell you, now, if you buy this, you will look like this. You will be like this. You will think like this. If you go to this university, you'll think like this. If you, if you buy this cosmetic, you'll look like this. So we, they try to match you and move you in their direction, right? That's the whole point. They want to, to look like what they want you to look like. And so we learn how to not want to see ourselves always. So let me read that verse I just read to you, Hebrews 4.12, but I'm going to read it to you out of a different version. It says, For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, the soul, and the immortal spirit, and of joints and marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. That last part is just powerful. Exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. Now, pause just for a second. The, I, I, I know that probably somebody would say, well, I've read the Bible and that, I, I don't like get it or feel like anything. Or That's because there's a difference between reading and feeding. If I spend time with it, ingesting it, digesting it, letting it, letting it do what God has intended for it to do, I'm going to get these actions taking place when the word gets into my heart, when the word gets into me. It's going gonna, it's gonna to expose, it's going to sift, it's going to analyze, it's going to judge the very thoughts and purposes of my heart. Amen? So God's word brings us a revelation of the reality of our heart. Of course, the Bible calls itself a mirror. It's like a mirror. You go and you can see what you look like. That's oftentimes scary, especially in the morning. Right? We can't fool God. He knows all about the deepest parts of our heart. He knows exactly what's going on. He can slice apart, and that's what this, word, this, this verse is saying. He slices apart every flimsy excuse, every self-deception, and he, and he cuts to the chase of the operations of the heart. But oftentimes we can, re we can resist that. We can resist that. In, in, se in September 1938, there was this guy on Long Island, this is a true story, who was able, he finally, he'd been wanting a barometer, and you know, I mean now a barometer's nothing, but back then they were expensive. It was a finely tuned piece of equipment to test bar barometric pressure, right? So he, he finally got enough money, ordered it, got it, got it came in, when he came in, he was so disgusted because 
the needle seemed to be stuck on hurricane. You know, so you got all these. It, it, my, I, we used to have one. My dad, I used to. I'd see my dad every morning tap that barometer to see if it was go the pressure was going down or the pressure was going up. He'd tap it every day. So then I then I did the same thing. I didn't know why he did it, but I'd do it anyhow. He'd go over, tap it and see if it would move, you know. And 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 but this needle was kind of stuck on on hurricane, which would be very low barometric pressure, right? And and so he was just disgusted. So he wrote a letter to the company, said, This thing stuck on on Hurricane, and he went to the office. He lived in New on, on Long Island. He was driving into the city, New York City, to go to work. Dropped off the, the letter in the mail, got to work, got home, and there was not only no barometer, there was no house because there was a hurricane. That reminds me of the Bible. Lots of times we go. And it says, hey, check this out in your heart. And we're like, hoping it'll move. No, it must be stuck. I don't know what's going on with this thing. But when the Bible says something's up, something's up. Amen? It empowers us to see who we really are. It gives us this view of who we really are. I, I would... I would never know that there's a hurricane going to come without, well, of course, now we have all kinds of weather we can listen to and all those things, but, but see, that, that barometer told him there was a hurricane coming. But it didn't look like a hurricane was coming. But it was coming. Amen? So seeing things for what they really are is really important. But, and self-revelation in its rawest form can be extremely scary really scary because we see things we don't like when we see things we don't like we have to we have to do something about them but the other side of this of the revelation part of the word is that not only do we see what we're like we also see what god is like first we need to see what we're like then we need to see what god is like amen I mean, we need to see things like John 10, where it says, Jesus says, I'm the door. If anyone enters by me, he'll be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I need to hear that. I need to understand Christ as my shepherd. Amen? I need to understand that he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we'd be holy and without blame before him in love. I need to hear what God is like. I need to hear, come unto me, all you that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. Amen? I need to, I need to let, I need to hear what God is like. So the word tells me what I'm like. It empowers me to actually see myself. And then it empowers me to actually see God and see God how he wants to work in me. Even once I've seen what's really in me. Good part is God's not afraid of what's in us. It's scary for us sometimes. It's not scary for him. It's strategic for him. He wants to do something powerful in the midst of it. Amen? So feeding on the word helps us see ourselves. Empowers us for it. It also empowers us to pick the right path. It empowers us to pick the right path. I'm just telling you these things this morning because I want you to want want the word. I I want you to want to feed on scripture. Because it is gonna, it's going to generate this amazing spiritual power in your life that's going to help you to be able to deal with life. So Psalm 119, 105, we all know this verse. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Proverbs 6, 23 says almost the same thing. It says, for the commandment is a lamp 
and the teaching a light. And the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. We live in a world that, produce, that provides all kinds of options to choose from. We're, bar, bar, we're bombarded. With manipulative media, we, they're, they're always trying to take us down their path. I said that before. And God's got a right path. And only his path is the right path for us to walk. It, it's the only right path for us. And the only way we're going to get that path is through scripture. Right? This is what the psalm is saying. So one writer points out the fact that he says, your word is a lamp and a light. So it's two different Two different things. He's, he's amplifying what he's saying. In, in other words, if we were to say it today, we'd be saying this. We'd be saying, okay, Lord, your word is like a flashlight. Your word is like a floodlight. I need to see right here in front of me, but I need to see the whole picture too. I, ne I need to be able to see so that I can pick the right path. Here's the flashlight. Here's the floodlight. Flashlight, floodlight, flashlight, floodlight. Amen? So we can find our way. Now that doesn't mean that we get every decision and every detail of everything in life when we read our Bible. So a couple different things I want to say here on, on this whole picking the right path thing. So the first thing is, is there, there are things that we need to pick that are just black and white. We don't, it doesn't take rocket science to figure them out. I, I mean, the, the easiest list of those would be called the ten, the ten Commandments, right? Pretty simple, right? It doesn't take rocket science to figure out, don't steal, don't cheat, you know, don't lie, don't commit adultery, don't covet, you know, don't make idols. We, we get it, right? The simple, black and white, here's right and wrong. You know which path to choose, take that path. If it's, if it's, if it's a choice between those kinds of things, you know which path to, to take. That's simple, 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 right? But what about the other, the other things that we, we aren't so sure about necessarily? I mean, what about uh, which house to buy? Which, which person to marry? Which job to take? I mean, and the list could go on and on for hundreds and thousands of different items, right, that we, we think about and we're, we're thinking, uh, right? We need light for that. We need, we need God to help us make good choices in all those areas. So what about that? Well, I'm going to suggest that God's word is just as effective in those areas as it is in the black and white areas, <clears throat> but in a different way. And it's going to be what I'm going to call, <clears throat> excuse me, cumulative wisdom. Cumulative wisdom. In other words, a little wisdom, a little more 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 wisdom. And you've got a lot of wisdom. Right? Psalm 19.7 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Now, the simple there is not stupid. The simple there means inexperienced. People who are inexperienced at life. So, making wise the simple. Helping people that haven't experienced these various things to know how to experience them, how to walk through them. Right? Right? And then Psalm 119, 130 says, The entrance and unfolding of your words give light. Their unfolding gives understanding, discernment, and comprehension to the simple. I love what Jack Hayford said here. He, he, he kind of captures this whole idea. He said, I've learned that regular reading of Scripture seldom gives me a, quote, shot of perceived wisdom each day. But I found, nonetheless, the Holy Spirit has a way of causing me to receive wisdom as a deposit. Not so much in phrases or words, but in elements of wisdom, the nutrients of God's truth flowing into my spirit. Then when I need it, though I not, may not remember chapters and verses, the strength 
and wisdom needed will be available by reason of the spiritual resources inside that which has accumulated through faithfulness to this spiritual habit. He's talking about reading the Bible. He's talking about feeding on God's word. I mean, it's a really powerful concept that we, we need to understand that, we, that as, we, as we take in the word over time, we begin to get... We, get, we begin to get what some scholars would call a biblical worldview. We start understanding how to look at, our, our, at life, look at the world we live in, look at decisions we have to make, look at situations with, with a biblical worldview. It changes everything. It changes everything. If you're about to make a decision in life and there isn't any scripture that comes to your mind, you're not where you need to be yet. Let me encourage you. Read your Bible more. I don't, know, I don't know that I've really ever come to any major decision or thing that I had to get through without some Bible verses. Not, 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 not that they necessarily specifically speak to that situation, but that they have a general bearing on it. That they begin to press in on me. And that's what God wants. He wants us to gain this cumulative amount of understanding so that when we find ourselves in a pickle, a jam, I don't know why they use food illustrations for those things, but it sounds good anyhow. Pickles with jam on it. No, I just. That we will have a wealth of understanding about the person the practices, the will, and the ways of God so that we're able to negotiate whatever we have to negotiate. Amen? So let me tell you a story. I'm going to read you a story. This, this, is a, this is a true story about a guy named Brian. Brian was working tirelessly at work, but by the end of the, end of the year, he found himself sitting alone on his couch, devastated. All the work he'd built and crumbled before his eyes in a matter of months, and now he was in a crisis of faith. At New, as New Year's approached, he tossed up a prayer about wanting to get closer to God, but it was all but forgotten by the second week of January. Right? We all do that, right? New Year's resolutions. I'm going to get closer to God this year. Next week, I forgot. Then God spoke to him to really, really read God's word. What he meant was feed on God's word. And so he obeyed God's direction and began to read through the Bible, taking in a portion of the Bible every day. When he completed his first full revolution through the Bible, he called one day looking in the mirror and realizing that he didn't see anything the same. Nothing. He'd been unwittingly transformed from the inside out and he looked at, at just about everything through different eyes. And then here's his words. This is Brian's words. He wrote this. My friendship with the Bible has taken me on the scenic route from who I was to who I was created to be. My path began with an act of obedience to read the Bible every day, and it wound its way almost backward to the beginning, forcing me to deal with the stresses and the compulsions of trying to carve out an identity that was mine all alone with God relegated to a backup plan. It took me back to the wounds that life can bring and invited me to compare what they were saying about me with what God was declaring over me. It transformed me, and it can do the same for you, Brian said. That whole idea of cumulative growth, cumulative. I take in the word every day. I take in the word, and I take in the word. And, and some days I need a specific verse that I can say, this applies directly to this situation. And some days I just need God to work on my soul so that next month when I'm facing a certain situation, God has worked on my soul. And my soul is ready for the work. Amen? Amen. All right, one more thing. I got one more thing to say. We could go on all day because the Bible, there's so many ways that it empowers us. It just, it, I was kind of at a loss for how to narrow it down because
because it, we, the Bible has so many things to say to our life and so many ways that it empowers us. But this third one is that by feeding on God's word, he empowers us to walk in purity. He empowers us to walk in purity. Psalm 119, we know this, these verses. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up my word, your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Verse 9, it says, uh, in, in a different translation, I, I like this, it says, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? Well, I got to tell you, first of all, uh, it's a great question, and every young person needs to deal with that, but I got to tell you, it's more than young people. Everybody, not just young people, need to stay on the path of purity, right? But he, he says, how can a young person stay on the path of purity by living according to to your word. So feeding on scripture informs us of what's right and wrong. It, it, it builds fences around our heart because our heart is always ready to jump the fence. It builds, it, it actually defines and describes boundaries for us. That's what the Bible does in this, in this sense. In that sense, it empowers us to know how to walk in purity. I mean, I have to say, and, and I, think I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty accurate in, in, in this statement, is that I, people who are literally feeding on God's word on a regular basis are very, very, very seldom sucked in to gross sin. Generally, if, if somebody comes to me and we're, we're talking about uh, you know, a sin issue or whatever and, and those kinds of things, it, you can almost always pin it down and find out that they, they, they haven't been praising, praying, or feeding. I'm not saying they haven't done it at all, but it's not a, it, it hasn't become such an ingrained habit that these boundaries are so well defined. Because what happens with scripture is scripture, it, it continuously is enlightening our conscience. It's cont continuously sensitizing our conscience. So I feel the need to push back away from certain things because my conscience won't allow it. When I'm not feeding on the word, I can, I can just keep moving forward because there's no voice. I'm not hearing the voice of the Lord. Are you with me on that? It's exactly what happens. I mean, Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. In other words, he's not going to spend his time hanging out with bad people. Nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. That's not where he's going to take his intake from. I'm not saying he doesn't get around him to share Christ, but he, that's not where he's going to, that's not going to be the source of his counsel and understanding. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He, that guy, that person, it's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. In all he does, he prospers. That, that's, that's the result of this constant delighting in and feeding on the word of God. But if we're not feeding on the word of God, we're going to have to feed on something else. Because everybody, nobody's going to go hungry all the time. Just like in the physical, so in the spiritual. If you're not feeding on the things that God wants you to feed on, you're going to be feeding on something else. Right? It's just like, you know, it's like, it, it, it's like living in a, in a household where one person understands that, you know, gee, we ought to probably eat a little healthier, and the other person doesn't see it that way. No, I'm not going to mention any, any names. But that's, that's very typical, especially in our culture right now. We are, people are waking up to healthy, more healthy living, and other people are resisting it, right? And so, I mean, I've been trying to eat healthier, lost 40 pounds in the last couple of years, you know. And, and so, I, 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 finally I woke up, right? got to make sure 
that we're understanding what, what God is wanting. So we're going we're gonna to eat something. So if we're not going to eat a salad, we're going to eat a Twinkie. Right? Not that Twinkies are, are horrible and a Twinkie now and then is okay, but if all you eat is Twinkies, you're in trouble. Right? And I don't know, I can't eat salad all the time either. I got to have some, uh, I got to treat myself, you know, balance, right? But we're going to find something to, to take in. God's got this amazing smorgasbord. It's a smorgasbord. And he says, I've got all you could ever want to take in. I've got sweets in here that will scintillate your tongue. I've got, I've got substantive stuff that will fill you up and make you feel solid. I've got it all in here for you. But if you don't, you're going to eat at the world's table. And that's going to become trouble. Amen? D.L. Moody said this. I love D.L. Moody. This book will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. Right? This book helps us understand where purity is. Amen? And it helps us to stay within the guardrails. I got, a, I got an illustration here. Let me pull it out. It's a very special illustration. You're going to need to zoom in on me, Eric. I don't know. If, I'm going to want you to zoom in on my, on my hand here in just a second, all right? Because nobody on the Internet would see this if you don't. Can you zoom in on that? You got it? What's that look like? Yeah, Phil, what does that look like to you? <laughs> it's a vitamin. You're right. It's a vitamin. I'm going to walk around now so you're going to follow me. See it? It's a vitamin. This, this vitamin, it's a big one. It's one of those daily multiple vitamins. Right? It's got vitamin A in it, vitamin B in it, vitamin C in it, vitamin D in it, vitamin E in it. It's got riboflavin. It's got, uh, you know, I don't know what else they got in it. What do they got in them? <laughs> you know, right? Your, your basic daily, daily vitamin, right? I don't know. You probably won't be able to catch me. I'll go around. I take a vitamin like this every day. Right? No, you're not going to have it. Right? We all, we all seen them. Common vitamin, right? You all agree that it's a good thing to take this vitamin? Is it a good thing to take this vitamin? Yeah. I think it's a good thing to take a vitamin. But if I only take this vitamin once, I might as well hardly even take it. Right? If I only take this vitamin on Sundays, probably not going to do much good because vitamins need to permeate our system if they're going to really do us any good I mean I need to hear I need to take this vitamin if I, if, if I start feeling bad let's say tomorrow I get a sniffle if I take this if I haven't been taking these and I take this tomorrow I get a sniffle not going to help much. It, might, it won't hurt and it might help a little, but not, it's not going to help a lot, is it? This vitamin to me is like the Bible. If I, if I only take my vitamin when I don't feel good, if I only come to church on Sunday and get my vitamin If I only once in a while dust off my vitamin bottle and say, hey, need a verse today. It's not going to help me as much. But if I'm taking my vitamins every day, I haven't been sick for like two years. Not even a cold. taking this every day, if I'm reading this every day, if I'm ingesting it, if 
I'm feeding on it every day, it saturates my system and keeps me healthy. It keeps me healthy. I'd love to just give you everybody a vitamin here today just to take home and stick on your refrigerator and make you think about it. Next time you take a vitamin, get your Bible out and say, this is my vitamin. I need to build up my soul. I need to get my spiritual immune system strong. I take vitamin C every day because I want my immune system strong. Every day. I have to take it. Every day. Can't like take it today and then next month take a couple more chewy gummies. You know, I like the gummies, but I need to take it every day so that my system stays strong. It stays strong. The practice of feeding on God's word generates incredible health and strength in the soul of the believer. And God wants that in each one of us. He wants our souls to be so strong. He wants us to be able to be to resist the devil's germs. And so he says, I'm going to give you something you can take every day. Every day. So that you'll be ready. You'll, your system will your spiritual immune system will be built up. You'll be strong. You'll know how to walk in purity. You'll know how to, you'll know how to walk the right paths. You, you'll understand things that you never understood before. Like the guy Brian I taught, told you about. That everything starts looking different. It doesn't cost you anything. Except the time and the desire. You don't hear some, you know, you hear people say they had their devotions and they had this amazing word from God and, and you're saying to yourself, that never happens to me. Well, it doesn't have to happen that way for you. You may be the vitamin every day person. One day you may realize, wow, I'm, I'm filled with the knowledge of God and the wisdom of God that I never had any clue that I even knew. That I even, I didn't even know it. And then all of a sudden, something happens and all that starts bubbling up and emerging. And you're like, wow, where did that come from? If you listen carefully, you're, you'll hear a little voice in the back, in the back of your head whispering, I've been reading you every day and you've been reading my mind. It's in there. It's in there. Amen? Let me encourage you today. On the word. Don't don't take it once once a month or once a week or take it every day so that you're strong. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth, Lord God. Thank you, Father. That Lord, you want to generate spiritual strength in our lives. Lord, that you want to grow us and keep us and make us strong to face whatever we have to face in life. Lord, you made it so simple. So Lord, may we seek you for the motivation to get in your word and feed on it every single stand and worship the Lord here.